Welcome in New York to the Post 90 Podcast. This is 2024 for us. This is the new beat. Uh, the club has new players, a new assistant manager. We're kind of into the swing of things with preseason. We're looking forward to talking about all of it in this episode. So I don't know. I don't know how we want to kick it off, but there's a lot of a lot of different ways to go with it. Generally, what are your feelings on the off season? I feel excitement. I feel. There's just been so many things going on. We finally made some moves in terms of having players come in. So I think just overall excitement, I'm trying not to get too hyped up because it does feel like a season that really, I don't know how much it really defines. I think it's a building block, but I don't know how much weight I really want to put into it yet. Well, I think we were, we were talking about all the players that have come in and I know we've done a little bit of I don't want to call it scouting because we're not professionals by any stretch I mean, of the intention. My season record will say different. <laughs> with, with six new players, five new players, whatever it is, I texted you the other day because I was trying to put together my starting 11, and I was just like, it's wild with all these inbound transfers. I don't think our starting 11 has changed. Our, our best 11 really depends. You don't, you don't want to put too much weight on preseason, but when you see talent, it's very apparent. Mm-hmm. And so... I think there's definitely some guys, some youth guys that are going to be pressing for main spots. I think there's definitely going to be maybe some guys that were fringe players before that could really step up and cement their spot as starters for this club, not only this year, but I'm excited. In terms of our 11 changing, I do think that our winger situation is going to be much different. I don't know how Talis is really going to be used, but... Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know that there's many changes. So I know we've been popping in the the Cushing press conferences, and one of the things Cushing said was that Talez is in his plans for the year, and that he wants to make him perform at the best level that a Talez Magno can perform. Which, it, when he is at his best, it's it's unlike any other player in the MLS, and it almost feels like maybe we have a few young guys now from the, the very little we've seen that may be able to contest with him. But if he can't net like 10 this year, and obviously coming from the wing position, I would expect a lot of assists, especially with the type of player he is, then I don't know. I, I, I would almost feel like we're dumb for not, if there was any truth to those rumors of, what was it, Napoli or Bologna that wanted right. to give us 15 mil for him. That's what I was just going to say. If it's he doesn't like, net 10 this year, we're dumb for not taking that. I was just going to say like, Speaking about what Cushing said, it's it's funny to say, yeah, like that guy that reportedly got a, a, an offer from Italy for $15 million. Like, yeah, he's he's in our plans this year. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, bro, I, I hope so. He better be. He better be if you're not going to take that money. But yeah, like Talis, it's a, it's a year for him to really cement the fact that he is a guy. And if he doesn't, I, is, that, is this his last year? I think it's really telling whether he's going to be here or in Europe or back in Brazil or whatever. And it, it gets even muddier when you look at the players that were brought in to the team. We have Hannes Wolf, yeah. obviously a predominantly a left wing. We saw him in the preseason game today against San Jose. He, he played right wing, looked decent, yeah. only 30 minutes. And then Jason came in and like, I hate to be the, I don't want to just harp on last season talking points, but like Jason has that fire. Yeah. And the, hey, the, the comments on YouTube are not friendly to him. Um, They've never, there was nothing some has Jason ever deniers. Been. I think the only, I don't know which of the two city boys it, it was on there, but at least there's, there's some defense for Jason in terms of his ability and, and his work ethic at the very least. You know? Well, and I was going to bring up their uh, episode of talking to him this offseason too, but he looked, he, he did look good in the preseason game today too, but aside from having that. Uh, Jason as a potential competition to Talis. like so we have already on the roster we have Julian and we have Alonzo Martinez right both wingers both already with the team we bring in Hanes and then we get Agustin Ojeda who appears to be like probably the next guy up at NYCFC like if you had to throw a dart and and try to pick one guy that would be that I think it's Ojeda it appears to be with the skill set that he has. And then maybe, Mal- I mean, Malachi is in the conversation too yeah. as another winger. Which is weird to say. Like, think of... It's weird to talk about a guy named Malachi. <laughs> yeah, when you're... And not feel weird about it. Yeah. But. Well, we have a, a, 
a lifelong best friend named Malachi. So, yeah, yeah, when not the same guy. Completely different people. So it couldn't be more different. Yeah. But you guys know baseball players. That's all. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be around them you if you don't yeah, have to. Right, exactly. <laughs> you limit how much you're around baseball players. <laughs> Um, but now, yeah, you're right. He came in and looked like a menace. Uh-huh. But now we're, we're, so we're almost up to like, I put in my notes, we're up to like a thousand wingers on the roster. But in, in one left back, who's a winger, really? And so that really, I think it lends itself to the idea that the four in the back that we saw today is not probably what we're going to really actually get. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be another year, like we were saying, of three slash five at the back type of trying to play all out attacking ball, which I would love if we could actually score. Um, today was a little bit, I don't know. I think you have a little bit different opinion on today, uh, but we'll get into that. Yeah, it was the left back, which you brought up briefly at the start of that is like the, a key position for us. I, I th- like you said, we just have a tool and we have uh, Christian McFarlane. Both of them played today. O'Toole is going to end up being the guy, I assume, but when we're looking at that that three and the five in the back, then that makes me think we're solving the midfielder problem of having four starting quality midfielders being Perea, Keaton, Sands, and Santi. That is how you get all four of them on a field, kind of in that diamond in there. But then are, are we replacing Tales for just Kevin out there, just O'Toole out there? And it just feels crazy to have a player, you know, we could call we could call it worth fifteen million. We could drop it to twelve if we're being conservative. Well, and not it, on the starting lineup of an MLS team. That it, it doesn't compute. It do, it doesn't feel right. Right. I mean, they're worth what someone's willing to pay. Right. I wouldn't. I've got pieces of paper that people would. <laughs> you pay. would sell for a thousand if someone would right. buy it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I I just think even I mean, to be fair to Talas today, he he did look like he was much more up for tracking back. Whether he did that well is another conversation, but he was at least willing to do it. Whereas before, I feel like he was very unwilling to do it. He was not going to really do anything other than hover around midfield and and look like he's trying. And, and the midfield, we kind of alluded to it, but that is another position where it almost feels like you have too much depth. Uh, especially us, I, I feel like, as hack enjoyers, Hack supporters. Really like hack guys. <laughs> yeah. When you have him, I mentioned the list before, Sands, Perea, Keaton, Santi. They're, they're also saying, I think in the, one of Cushing's press conferences, he mentioned that Hanez, he, he sees him potentially taking on an attacking midfield role too. It's like, I don't know how you cram all these guys into one thing. And it just feels like we may be doing the thing this season where... Cushing is kind of picking a lineup based on matchup week to week, which is scary because you're going to need guys that are not always fresh, in t- fresh in terms of in form, I should say. Right. Guys that aren't in form that are maybe they didn't play the last game or two because the matchup didn't suffice, having to come in and do a job. Right. And that, I think, is where it gets scary. It will get scary in terms of chemistry because what Nick Cushing teams lack typically is chemistry. Because he are- Whereas you see, like I told you today, the, when the kids came in, they all look like they've played together for a long time because they've played yeah, together for a have, long time. They have, yeah. Right? Like one makes a move and the other one knows where the other is. Like that's, that I feel like is the way that New York City plays football. Like that's really the way that we play. And when you're not having players play consistently together, you tend to get away from that. And, and I think that that's something that the Cushing teams have always lacked. And if he does decide to go that route, there's the players now in position to do it. It's really just, it comes down to the mentality of the players to actually want to. Mm -hmm. And it's it's hard too for them, I think, because the lack of consistency in getting selected has to for sure weigh on you. And and if you're not starting every game with the same 10 guys every week, you're not going to be able to generate that that chemistry. So that's what worries me going the matchup route. I think there's like pros and cons to if you can counter perfectly the team that you're playing, that will help. But if we don't get some of those guys going season long, it's just not. Well, I think that also it, it highlights some of the, the things that can go wrong when you're the ultra like lads lad guy, you know, the, the coach that wants to take care of his players. It's like 
every time somebody comes to you and says, I want to play, you play them. And then you're also benching somebody else and mm -hmm. messing up the team chemistry uh, potentially and things like that. So I think really what that conversation highlights is more than Tala's, it's, it's a very big Nick Cushing season as well. Yeah. And people have been having conversations kind of all over the, the number of podcasts that are in the NYCFC community now in the spaces on Twitter or just kind of talking about it is the Cushing leash, they're saying. How, how long is the Cushing leash? And I just don't, I feel like I don't have an answer to that question. I don't know if you feel like you do, but to me, it's just there's so much like nuance to a, a season. I think we talked about this a, lo a lot of the year and I think probably longer than most last season, we were, we were pretty cushing in and we were pretty vocal about it. And a lot of the excuses that we would use to support him would be like poor referee play, different things like that. You know, players maybe not showing up. Injuries, uh, suspensions. Players not being brought in to, to use. We didn't get Burke and Baki until, what was it? Right. September, August. Yep. So there were, there were a handful of things that allowed us to, to do that, but I think these things are getting brought up again. And I agree that there probably is a point this season where Cushing could not be our manager. Like there's a unit, that for universe sure. exists. For, for sure. Yeah, and, it, and, and frankly, it should exist. That should yeah. be a thing. Like if there's a hundred, I would say if there's a hundred universes, <laughs> let's say 20 of them end with Cushing not being the guy anymore. Okay. That's pretty optimistic. You're like 80% chance optimistic. to succeed. Just because I feel like this front office, specifically with Nick, sees things that are out of his control. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like our club it, it has this tendency to rinse and recycle more than others. Yeah. And I think uh, another thing attributing to the leash uh, maybe being shorter than longer is now he does have his guys. And... What speaks to that is not only the fact that they were brought in, but when people are asking questions in the press conferences, how do you feel about Hannes? How do you feel about Ojeda? And like, I think word for word, Cushing is like, I was a very, each time, I was very keen to bring in this guy. I, I love this guy. His, his attributes are going to very much help the team. He has this X, Y, and Z going on for him. And it's like, okay, so now you have, I mean, how many transfers under Cushing do we have? We have Burke. Both wingers with Fernandez, Fernandez, oh, yeah. Alonso, Burke. Four Bonte. last season and now five or six this season. So you have 10 guys that have now been brought under your command. And I don't think we're at a point anymore where you can lean on the FO hasn't supported me. I think plus, that's out the window. Plus making, whether it's Nick doing it or the front office themselves, like also not taking on certain guys like Malt, like mm -hmm. Kufre, like not only getting the guys that you want, but, but being able to be like, I don't want that guy, and we need to do something about that. I was going to say, dare I mention the C word? Chanel. Dare right. I mention Chanel? Like, like a, a, crazy. A, a through and through, give him a statue in Queens type of guy. And they're like, you want him gone? Right. He, okay, he's gone. He said what he's, to you? Yeah, he's in France now. Oh, we're bet. So he, yeah, in, in my opinion, he fully has the backing of the FO at this point. There is no uh, disputing that. So that, that, to me, shortens the leash a little bit. And like I said, it, it, it's hard to put, I, I think people like to put a number of games. They're like, if he's not, <laughs> if we're not seven, at least seven wins in our first 10, even though we won nine last year, then he should be fired within 10 games. And it's just like, what if we got like a bad ref call in each game that gave up a pen? Because right. this is the, this is pro refs, unfortunately. Or find some wood to knock on. <laughs> But like we suffer a major injury again. Yeah. Like he brought in Maxi, and then Maxi blew his knee out like mm -hmm. two games later, three games later. Yeah. That like you can't Maxie, really blame him for that. Maxi would have helped. I don't want to go down the road that we potentially go to the playoffs if we have him. But like to think. To well, think no, we that were on the roll to do that. Yeah. We really were. Maxi has that that pedigree, and that's another guy to talk about. I, I'm not sure what role he can embody in our team especially we just talked about all those midfield we didn't even say maxi's name right like I, he's injured i don't know how he i don't know how he gets into this lineup which and that might be the coldest take well that's the thing though that's the that's the theory with this is like how much can he really rotate this team mm -hmm. to keep i guess his best guys fresh 
you know, is it going to be riding the hot hand like we often saw last season? I, I really don't know. Yeah. Um, and I think these are all good questions for Nick. I just wish he was a little bit more transparent. Yeah. Well, he, he has... He has a, a master's degree in corporate speak, Ma- like like a doctorate almost. Yeah. and maybe we 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 parlay that into a, a start in the conversation about all the new people that came in. We'll run the clip, but I got the opportunity to ask Nick about Leon Hapgood, obviously the new assistant manager for us. Hey, coach, this is Adam from Post Ninety. Uh, hope Coach Ellis treating you guys well. Um, first presser since you guys brought in Leon. I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about the hire. Um, your relationship and what you think he brings to the team? Um, well, Leon's also going through the process of, of getting his visa, so he's not actually with us at the moment, but he's someone that I've known for 12, 13 years now, somebody that um, is a professional friend, someone that I've followed his journey, he's followed mine. We've crossed paths a lot across our journey of um, developing players, developing as coaches, and then developing teams into winning teams. and. He's done a, a, a really excellent job with, with Cavalry and, and with the head coach. I'm close there with Tommy, the head coach as well. And um, somebody that adds really good energy to our group, our coaching team, somebody that has a great knowledge of the game. But I think his energy and enthusiasm and just the type of coach he is, is going to really blend well with the, with the coaching team that I've got here. So um, I'm sure across all of the content, the, the great content that we do, you'll, see, you'll hear Leon for sure. Um, and I just think he's a really, a really good, a good ad for, for, for the team. And as we just heard Nick say, we do great content here at NYCFC. You're going to love his personality in that. And it's just like, I, I actually care so little about... Yeah, literally. <laughs> uh, like, I, no, I guess I care about Leon's personality, right? And him being one of the guys and being able to relate to the players. But like, I don't care if like, I'm going to laugh when I watch yeah. a YouTube video. Uh, but I definitely need to know like what he is going to contribute to our attack. Maybe in the press release, they talked about how Leon is very attacking minded and he is also long, I guess, been known for player development, which is something we desperately need. Which is something I think, which I think would show growth on Nick's part, mm-hmm. right? To, to be able to step back and say, you know, maybe this is something that I'm not so good at. Let me bring somebody in who is. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think... All signs, I mean, everybody's preseason signs point towards positivity, right? Nobody hires somebody to stink it up. Yeah. But when you make hires like this, and if, if they're going to get along and they're going to have a ha-ha joke in time and, and coach us to a, a W and a, a championship, <laughs> brother, I'm all in. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. Am I going to be laughing at the dude if we're... Oh, and six? Probably not. Yeah, no. I probably won't care at all. No. And so, yeah, make the content that he provides good on the pitch. And, That's really and, all I care about. And hopefully the, the press release is accurate because I think there's no, there's no telling that or there's no hiding the fact that last season or even, even before that what our issue has been at NYCFC for the better part of probably like three seasons now since we won the cup is the attack. Definitely. I don't know where we get all these magical band-aids for our defense but like we we find a way to find a way to play defense yep. in this club that's what we do yep. tiago goes down we plug in hack Tavon, sands we have yep. all these homegrowns that they all have a center back position in yep. their fifa bio somehow <laughs> i don't know where they got it i don't know who they i don't know who they paid for it but they can be plugged in and it's serviceable. It's a serviceable job that you're going to get. So hopefully Leon, it, he's able to, I guess, work with the guys that we have. I know Cleberson took off, but to make this attack what it needs to be. With barring, like you said, the, the release being correct, being an attacking-minded coach and coming in with this talent and the youth <laughs> that's here, like, it's got to be a wet dream, right? Like, that's got to be the, the greatest thing to come into and see. That's like you, you, you load Madden. And you see your team is nothing but rookies, <laughs> yeah. and they all got good development traits, and you just have to do, you do the work. Yeah. I was going to say, you, you rip your three randoms, and you get, like, the Texans <laughs> or the Packers or something, and it's just like, all these kids are 20, but they're all, like, right. 90 rated. They're all dogs. <laughs> yeah. And so I think that's literally the situation that he's coming into. If Nick's going to be more of uh, the personality guy or whatever he wants to be, 
let it let it be let it i i welcome it i like i've said many times and and i don't think it'll be more true than this season i don't care who it is dude i don't care if the city boys show up play center back bro <laughs> And we're winning games. I yeah. literally don't care. If we have to sign you to a four-game br- striker I mean, contract. I'd give it a shot, bro. Nah. You know, i give it my all. Yeah. If we're winning, I literally don't care. Yeah. Um, I, I think, in, at least in that respect, we're probably better off with Tiago. Sorry, uh, Javi and Daniel. Not no, no disrespect, but just to show you, I'm also on your side. We're way better off with, like, a Baki. For sure. Than a Justin. For sure. And... If you've seen me try to hit a cross from Adam, <laughs> it would be shocking. I yeah. don't think anyone will listen to me again. <laughs> and I don't want to take too much. This is now the portion of the show where we're going to talk about the preseason. Sorry for the hard stop, but <laughs> I want to make... I, I was thinking all day when we, or when we were talking about preseason games, I want to be very careful what, how much we're taking from it. Malachi Jones is going to win player of the year. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, it just is what it is. That is what I was prefacing. But Baki when we're comparing him to you or maybe other MLS players, which is more appropriate, looked good in this game. And now, remember, <laughs> remember what I said. And I know you don't fully ag- agree totally with what I'm saying, but remember what I said about preseason games and not taking a lot from them. When I saw him come out of second half and run at the goalie and like he, he had like an arm, like he had his fingertips on the goalie as he was, as the goalie was letting his pass out of the back fly. I was like, is that number eleven? Is that number eleven <laughs> over there? Is yeah. that Valentin? And I was just like, the the press, especially coming out of half. I thought on the broadcast, Glenn mentioned he thought the starters were only going to play forty five minutes, and they ended up playing like sixty three, sixty yep. or whatever. Uh, so in the preseason, to you think to, that was a little Nick Cushing meme to sub everybody at sixty minutes. It was just to be like, it was a great guys. picture. <laughs> like to like everybody. <laughs> In the podcast world, just a middle finger to him. <laughs> yeah, the whole the whole team at once. Yeah, he's like, you oh, can't I, take I don't make subs in the sixtieth minute. <laughs> yeah, how about ten people? But to see Baki still pressing, a la Valentin, prime right. Valentin, in the coming out of half in a preseason game, to me, I was very pleased with Baki. And the and the two goals that we scored in the first half were created off of Baki pressing. Right, he got the dude slipped, but if Baki was not screaming at, not screaming, but running at him, possibly uh, screaming, yeah, that's not that probably doesn't end up in a goal. And kudos to Baki too to finish that one on one. We've seen I situations mean, where, that. yeah, but we've seen him not. We've seen him right, not. but that that's that's where I think some of the praise from you. I was like, yeah, but like we're just seeing him things. Seeing him do things that he should do, mm-hmm. and he did um, have a sitter moments later moments. that he missed, I mean, which is classic. And then we Bucky. conceded immediately. Yeah, classic. Bucky. And so, Twice we I, in terms of the press, like I don't think that normal teams will be as bothered by that press in a normal game. I, I just don't. It, it was good to see us do it, and it was effective. But I think it was effective because San Jose is, in my opinion, not very good, mm-hmm. um, and, and they let up really Mickey Mouse plays Mm -hmm. in those in those two goals and so I wouldn't expect the same effort I I still think that there's a level up that the press has to get to to really be serviceable and really cause issues like a 2021 press that was serious pressing right in our championship year and and really a lot of it was off the back of what Tati was able to do, but like... Well, you would see literally the, the whistle would blow for halftime or the start of the game, and, and it was just like a missile straight to the ball. Sprint. He's just ball chasing. Just as, literally yeah, ball literally. chasing. If Rocket League players would hate him. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but I don't know that it'll cause as many problems if we don't elevate that. So I'm happy to see it. I'm, I don't want to be the hater over here. I know I sound like Debbie Downer, but um, it still does need to go up a level. Um, and then our, our our passing and things like that also needs to go up a, a level. I think we saw glimpses of it working out. There's also glimpses where it really didn't work out. Mm-hmm. And I think it looked like Nick was relying on guys like Santi and Hans to really take the ball and physically bring it up. Yeah. Rather than, I guess, passing around or relying on passing. I know I did make a, a mental note early that Alenich and Hannes were having a tough time connecting 
and and it, it seemed more so like it was from the Atlantic side, just a, f a few of the passes were just not going where they needed to be. Um, but that's preseason. Preseason in the preseason. Um, so not, not to take too much away from that. I don't know if we want to say more about your Malachi claim, but- I mean, I would talk about the, the kid is- The kids in general. Yeah. Malachi, at least, appears to be fun to watch. And I think maybe that is the best way to describe it. He, he looks to be creative. He wants to take guys on. He has the pace. And he runs into open space, too, which I know is one of the, the big things that you enjoy they give it a to player you, take doing. It, man. Like Hack. That's one of, one of your favorite traits about Hack. And I, and I saw that from him. And he was fun to watch. And maybe that's what it's best to leave at. Maybe we, maybe we all don't make a cult following around just because he has poku's number and i mean i, I would get a jersey and, and nah, <laughs> nah, I'm, nah. I'm playing i'm playing uh, if you see me with the 88 just know it's for poku not for jokes <laughs> but nah, I, I just like excitement behind the kid he looks like he wants to play here he looks like he wants to do his job and get forward and connect with people and he's comfortable doing that um i think also i don't know who if it was a center back or a left back for us but that he looked really good as well. I think mm -hmm. I, I don't know his name. Um, McFarland? No. A tools replacement. No, I'd have to go back and look. But that could. I think he's a, one of the defenders, um, and he's from the academy as well. He looked good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Our academy, like if you need any any kid in our academy, we'll play center back. Right, and well, I'd and like they'll a, excel at it. Like I told you, it's like I'd feel comfortable pulling up those kids to play. <laughs> yeah. In, and it's a, a real game. It's a wonder last year that we didn't. It's, I know. It's a wonder that times. we let an MD walk and not, not get a run in 2023. Not to dive too much into that, but letting him walk at this point probably makes sense. But the fact that his opportunity didn't come last year and maybe you don't, maybe you don't want to risk the next pro golden boot, but like who really cares if your first team is fighting right. for the playoffs. But I would like to see us give, give more shots to those kids. Yeah, but then you see, like, I, I hate that I always do this, but... It, Turnbull worked out, Turnbull. I would say, personally. <laughs> I don't think but now he's people. gone, so... Right. How is he, how is he I don't on know. the roster? We desperately need to be back. back. Yeah. But yeah, look, like I was going to say, I hate that I always relate it to Manchester United, but it's just, you you like to see it mirrored, and, and there's so many times where United fans are really, really big on a, on a youth player, and they see him in preseason, and they're like, oh my God, that's the guy... And then United gets rid of them. And you just kind of got to trust at that time that the professionals are doing what they're paid for. Yeah. And, and nine times out of ten, you never hear that name again. Yep. And so, could Myers go on and be a really big dog and sign for the Red Bulls and want to kill us? Like, yeah, that's possible. The likelihood of it? Unlikely. Unlikely. Yeah. Especially when, when we're in this city football group system, and I know... Maybe early on we talked about going through each of these players, and if you're new to the pod and you somehow found this as your first episode, we usually try to keep it 20, 30 minutes, and we by no means, if, if you want some real lengthy, adjective-filled <laughs> analysis on young players, especially South Americans. I mean, you had to do Olympics to get through that <laughs> sentence. Yeah. There are, there are tons of sources of that in the NYCFC community at the outfield. Five Borough Footy killing it with their graphics. So we'll probably limit yeah, going I mean, into each player individually because even at this point, we haven't seen any of them except Hanez play, and we've touched on him. But check out, the art. there's articles. There's many right. articles out there, and, and we've linked to them out on our Twitter too, trying to um, take care of the guys and spread the word while we can. Just overall, I put a summary to it. Everyone's exciting until they're not. Mm -hmm. And so we could definitely... Uh, dang, I feel like a Debbie Downer this episode. Like, I just keep kind of shitting on things. Yeah. But you guys end, are going to be like, this guy sucks. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, like, we could play the game of, this guy's going to be the greatest player that MLS has ever seen. That doesn't really happen a whole lot with our signings here. Um, they kind of just become role player guys that will have runs of great games and runs of poor games. So, and then they get shipped to Girona. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so or wherever, any Montevito, any light blue club around the world. <laughs> so I'm excited in terms of being able to see what they can do. But ultimately, it, I go, I fall back to the I don't care if it's Nick Cushing going out there and playing striker, dude, if we're scoring goals and we're winning, 
I could care less. Yeah. So I think we'll continue to, to get behind the players. And I think it's important to support Cushing, especially going into this, what is a clean slate? We obviously have baggage that is right in the closet and the door is shut, but it's like, it's kind of wanting to open. But supporting him and giving him that opportunity, I, nobody wants to be under immense stress to the level of wanting or thinking they're going to be fired and all that. Right. Um, so giving him a clean slate with these, these new guys and seeing what he can do is something that we're going to be doing, I think. For sure. We're not going to forget about what's happened, but taking into account that it's the MLS and anything can happen. I think it'd be crazy. We said at the beginning of last year and we didn't even make the playoffs, but it would be crazy, I think, for, for us to not make the playoffs, especially with these reinforcements. We built depth where we needed to, which has long been a big issue for us since the exodus of, of Campiones that we let walk out the door after 2021. Um, so we have a shot, and, and we're, we're always pretty optimistic. And I'm just, I'm genuinely looking forward to the season. It's like, I think we're um, like three weeks away now. It doesn't feel like we, it can get here quick enough. I think we have Philly in the preseason on it Saturday. It doesn't feel real. Because it, it doesn't, it almost feels like a year ago when we're like, oh my God, we got a game. We're, we're going to have a game in three weeks. Mm-hmm. Like it still feels like that back then. Yeah. Um, I don't know where the year went. But yeah, overall, I would say I'm I'm very excited. I want I want us to come out and, and smack people in the mouth and win games. I want to sh- I want us to show that fire that we've had. And I almost think that missing the playoffs was necessary. You know what I mean? Because you can you can look back at it and go, we may not may not be the best team in the East. We may not be the best team in the MLS. But we're not that. Mm-hmm. We're not the guys that are going to miss the playoffs. We're not that team. Yeah. There's a lot of room to improve. That's Exactly. Like, there's only up. Yeah. I mean, technically you could go down, but there's only yeah, up. It doesn't really get worse. If you're, if you're missing the playoffs, it doesn't matter if you're Realistically, 15 through 20. Missing the playoffs is the same as losing in the final, you know, getting on the fort. You are sitting in the same seat at the end of the offseason. Everyone's going to Cancun anyways. So... That's, uh, that's 117, believe it or not, and the first episode of season five, which I was digging through the files to, to prep to edit this thing, and I was like, holy shit, it's season five for us. Crazy. Which is long, so we appreciate you guys if you've uh, been here for the journey, any part of it. If, if this was your first episode and, and you're listening to this part of it, yep. uh, that probably means you like, you like the show. So look forward to having you on board. Wouldn't that mean I was just allowed to drink? When this was started? Math, 26. Math says so. Math says I was just allowed to drink. Yeah. Well, 20, 2019, I think it was birth. The socials were, were birth. And then 2020, we had, I don't remember when the MLS is back tournament started, but it was obviously after COVID. But that was when we were really into it. I remember reacting to Chicho's pen that if he scored it, it got there was us. A, no, it was a... I think Somebody it was else. Chicha. No, it was an Argentinian player. Uh, or it was Pavon. Um, Pavon. Pavon. Yeah. Pavon yeah. I almost said like the backyard baseball player. <laughs> Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from the baseball. But yeah, that's 117. We appreciate you guys. We're probably not on a regular schedule until the season picks up. We have two preseason games coming up. I think one on Saturday and then one on like Tuesday or something. One of them again is against Philly. I already know. We're probably going to be... We'll probably all be hot and bothered about the field game. <laughs> Even though nobody yeah. cares about the preseason and winning doesn't matter. Perez is going to be up for it. We hate him. Oh, yeah. Although he, just for housekeeping, he apparently had a small knock that kept him out of playing this game. Same with Julian. So that's why we didn't see them. Yeah. Yeah. So. But if you're new here, this is what we do. We outro and we, then we and ramble we for, for 510. Yeah. So we'll wrap it up now. We'll wrap it up and get back to working out and getting fit again yeah that'll happen <laughs> surely that'll happen that'll happen surely uh, anyways post 90 podcast or pod pod everywhere it's been so long everywhere everywhere anywhere you find us there if you made it this far man you're a trooper catch you guys in the next one yeah follow peace. get us in the next one peace yeah <laughs> the rust <laughs> the rust <laughs>